Well, welcome everyone to round four of our sessions today at EdCamp. My name is Jenny Ray and I will be your session host. If you have any technical difficulties or need some help, just uh, text me um, through Zoom and let me know. We are with Tanya Jury today from Hardin County Schools and she will be talking about the three C's of turning a school around. So Tanya, I am glad to turn it over to you. Thank you so much for being here and for sharing this information. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me. Um, just to give you just a brief background um, on me before I get started, just so you know who's talking to you. Um, I have served as um, a teacher in the middle school, um, language arts and social studies. I've also been an instructional coach at the middle school level, um, assistant principal at middle and high school and principal at middle and high school. So what I'm going to be talking to you about today um, will be at the high school and middle school of two schools that I've worked at um, where we have made some, some significant changes. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and get started. Um, as I'm going through, don't hesitate to stop me or ask questions. I know that um, Ms. Jenny is going to monitor the chat for us. So if we have any questions, then um, she will take care of that for us. Let me share my screen with you real quick and we will get going. So Whenever we take um, both schools where I was principal, the first thing that I wanted to do, and I was familiar with both of these schools because I had been assistant principal there um, at the beginning, but I wanted to um, know, I knew what I thought about the school, but I wanted to see what everyone else thought. So I did a survey um, of our students, our staff, and our parents, and you'll see some of the words that came up um, at the beginning. Um, you'll see things like struggling, uh, fighting, potential, um, growing, changes. Um, whenever I first became principal here where I am currently at Bluegrass Middle School, um, the year prior, we had 2,270 major behavior referrals for the year, which was the most in the district. Um, poor community perception at both of those schools. And then at both of those schools, we were lowest academically in the district. So we knew that there needed to be some changes um, to be able to better support our students and our staff, of course. So we took some of these words and we discussed how can we make those changes because there was love, there was a sense of family, um, there was you'll see this word potential. We knew that um, we couldn't give up. And so we looked at who we wanted to be. Um, and in my presentation, you will have a link to the article that links um, to these uh, nine characteristics of a highly effective school. So whenever you look at what do you need in order to turn that around, um, you'll see that you want a clear and shared focus as a school. Um, high standards and expectations for all students, effective school leadership. I'm not going to read all of these to you, um, but I just want you to see we took these as a whole and we grouped them into three categories. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, and all of those will fall into one of those three categories. And you'll see those here. Those are care culture, communication, and consistency. And so those became our core priorities as a school in everything that we do. Um, that includes everything with students, with our parents, with our staff, um, with our community. We focus on these three things because we feel like if you don't have these three priorities, um, then nothing else is going to matter. Um, and so we created these um, kind of um, missions for ourselves, but we'll create a culture of care for our staff, students, families, school, and community. We will commit to open, honest, and ongoing communication with staff, students, and families, and create systems of consistency to hold each person accountable and then to empower our students and our staff. And as we go through, you'll see the system that we created um, in order to make these things happen and to implement them so that it became not just words on paper, but something that we were living and dedicated to every day. And it's not just me as the principal who's dedicated to this, but our staff bought in, our students have bought in. And then we will talk about at the end, um, everybody wants to know, did it really work? Yes, we have the data to prove, to show that um, implementing these three core priorities really does work. And it seems simple, um, but these are, these are where you have to start to make a change. 
So one of the things that I did with the staff um, that they have told me was very beneficial, um, and I would like for us to participate um, in that if we could, it won't, we won't go through the whole thing because it would take too long, but here's a text protocol um, that I did with them, and I would like for you to do this as well. So I have three articles here linked, and you should have access to all three of those. One is about how to create a positive school culture. One is consistency wins the race. And one is five habits of highly effective communicators. So what I would like for us to do is to choose one of those articles to read. We're just gonna take about four minutes. And Miss Jenny, if you don't mind to be the timekeeper, um, to kind of read through that, you're gonna select a sentence, a phrase and a word. Um, and we'll type those in the chat and we'll go through those one at a time. But for now, if you could just choose one article to read, um, and then take notes as you read that. This will help us to understand the culture communication consistency and how they best influence the school. So I might need to drop the links to those articles in. So hang on just one second, just in case okay. they're not, not in the slide deck. There's the eight yes, ways to build a positive school culture. Yes, ma'am. Second. Here's the consistency wins the race is the second one. And here's the five habits of highly effective communicators. Okay, and timing starts now. All right, and that is time. Thank you. So one of the uh, purposes of using this text protocol is those um, articles can be lengthy. And we did this during a faculty meeting. And so we did not, um, I didn't, I gave access to all the staff so that they could go back and read if they wanted to on their own time. But this allowed us to have discussion around these texts and to get really out of it what we needed to get out of it to know how we can move our school forward. So if you would, um, Number two, ask you to, in the chat, type a sentence that you found significant. Um, and we will just look at those sentences for just a second and um, have conversation around um, anything that you felt like was significant that stood out to you, just a sentence at this point. So looking at some of the state statements that you guys had there, um, you can achieve any goal you set if you're consistent. Um, building strong relationships. We talk about relationships all the time whenever you talk about the care of the culture. People want real and they want to know, our students want to know that we're real, that we treat them as real people. Um, our families want to know that. And so I think that that's very important um, to remember as you're looking to turn your schools around and as you're looking to change the perception from the community. Um, if you will add a phrase that you found that stood out to you in the reading that you found significant, if you'll add that in the chat. I love that, Megan. Building strong relationships needs to be a whole school priority. Again, as I said earlier, it, it can be my vision all day long, but if we don't pass that on to our staff and we don't pass that on to our students, um, then they're not going to be able to feel that and it's not going to make that change that needs to happen. And again, as you move from the sentence to a phrase to a word. So if there's one word, in this article that you read that stood out to you, if you could put that in the chat. Visibility, that's a good one. So 
So as a staff, we talked about these and what is it from those words and those phrases and those sentences that we wanted to implement into our school to make the changes that we needed in order to reach those nine characteristics of a highly effective school that we knew that we wanted to be. We knew we weren't there and, and it took practice and it took us coming together as a team to be able to get there. So I just wanted to share this protocol with you so that you could have access to those if you chose to use this moving forward. This was the next step in our process. We looked at and had discussion as a staff, and we won't go through this whole process, but I, it, you can feel free to email me if you have further questions. But we talked about what does a culture of care look like? What, do, what expectations do we as a school want to have? We know that every school is different. Every population is different. Kids are kids. We know that. Instruction is instruction. Um, but there are specific nuances with each school um, that you need to know about your school that others might not know. So what school-wide expectations will we have? How do we create that for our staff and our students? And we can't forget to celebrate. We have to celebrate our staff. We have to celebrate our students and our families and our community. And that's how we build that culture of care have a very um, short video. Some of you may have seen this, but if you don't get culture right, nothing else is going to matter. That is um, one of the big focus areas because we realized that without culture, um, we weren't going to be able to do anything else without caring for our kids, without caring for our staff. Um, we couldn't move forward. And so we started there and we, um, you'll see here in a minute how we looked at what processes we already had into place and what we needed to put into place. We did the same thing with communication and we did the same thing with consistency. We had those discussions as a staff because again, I could go in as a new principal and say, this is what we're going to do and this is how we're going to do it. Um, but I wanted the buy-in from my staff. Feedback to me is very important. And so I wanted them um, to help me build the system. And so that's what we did. Um, and so we had those conversations as a staff and came together to decide this is who we want to be and this is how we're going to get there. We did break off um, into groups. Um, we did it by department is how we um, handled that. And so we looked at what does a culture of care communication and consistency currently look like? And then what do, what do we want it to look like? Are there things that we want to keep? Are there things that we want to stop? And are there are things that we want to start. Um, and so we looked at all of those um, and then we came together, we broke out into departments and then we came back together as a group to have those conversations, <clears throat> excuse me, about what we wanted to be as a school. And here is just an example of some of those things that you can see um, that one uh, department came up with to build our culture of success. And then we took those and we took it a step further with our staff. Um, and this is a lot of words on a page. It looks um, better whenever it's printed out, but um, we have coaching sessions with our teachers. And so every three weeks we meet with our teachers to come back to those priorities because we know that if we don't continue to come back to those, um, then they will fall by the wayside with our day-to-day -day activities. So we talk to them each week about what are you doing to debate a culture of care in your classroom um, and communication and consistency and instructional excellence. Um, and at first it was uncomfortable because change is uncomfortable. Um, and having conversations about that, um, coaching conversations were uncomfortable. But this is one of the things that the teachers have told me have really helped them to grow as a professional, um, is to be able to have that conversation. One of the things that they um, have that they do now is they go into a peer's classroom and um, do peer observations. And it's not to be um, evaluative of their peer, it's for them to get feedback on how they can grow um, as a professional. And that really has helped them in their coaching conversations. Um, you'll see this as a document that we use um, to help them with that coaching. We talk about ways that they're currently promoting that in their classroom. And then this um, part where it says teacher reflection and collaboration notes, this is really just um, a document to where we can go back and forth and have conversations so that we don't lose those thoughts as they see things in other classrooms that they want to implement, or if they have things that they want, um, they can link things here that they want me to see or that they want to share um, with faculty at the faculty meetings they share out frequently. 
Um, so I told you I would show you the data to show that um, what we implemented is working. Um, so last school year, um, at, between August and January, we had 611 major behavior referrals as a school. Um, whenever we first came in, I told you there were 2,270 for the year. Um, so there was a cut last year, but if you see this year, we're at 258. So we've had an even more significant cut this year. This was at the high school that I was at, and we tracked the data there as well. So the previous year before we implemented the um, three core priorities of culture, care, uh, communication, and consistency, no behavior events went from 66.3 percentage of our students to 71.2. Our suspension rate went down and ISS went down. Um, and then this was our academic data at the high school um, from the previous year to the year that this was implemented year one. We know that change takes time and we know that turning a school around takes time. So you're not going to see significant changes the first year, but we were pleased to know that what we were doing was working. Um, and then this is after year two. So you can see that even more significant from 2270 um, down to 258 at this time. So um, we know that um, these three core priorities are what we want to continue to focus on um, to get to where we want to be as a school. And there is my contact information if you have questions or if you want further information. That was just kind of a quick overview of the process that we went through, but I would be more than happy to share any of that with you. If you do have any questions, feel free to unmute your mic or to tap them in the chat if that's more convenient for you. Tanya, we, we definitely appreciate the information that you share, the learning um, that you've provided as well. Absolutely. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Sure. Does anyone have any questions for Tanya at this time? culture, you know, as we heard earlier this, this morning, if you were able to, to be here for the opening um, piece, that is just such a important part. And so I think that Tanya has been able to provide some concrete examples of how to make changes even starting tomorrow, or maybe just seeing what's happened at, at Tanya's schools, then maybe that will spark some other idea that would be, that would be useful in, in your specific text context. The three C's you mentioned, the culture, communication, and consistency are, are certainly key. Definitely couldn't do anything else without those for sure. So we do have a question. A great, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, great question, David. We, um, I found it more helpful to start with our staff um, because they are the ones who are with the students every day. And so um, we did, um, as a group, decide how we wanted to present this to our students as well. Um, and I knew I wouldn't have time to present that today, but we had a um, whole process where we went through on where we came up with at first our cardinal expectations and then bulldog expectations um, on how we were going to be consistent with them as well. So they had the same core values in the classroom um, through our PBIS expectations too. So we definitely started with the staff first um, to get the buy-in from them and to make sure that they could deliver the message as well, and so that we were consistent in our um, communication with them. Thanks. What other questions might you have? Well, if you think of some later, you do have Tanya's uh, contact information as well um, and the resources. Don't forget to, to click on those resources to save as well. I'm going to get, go ahead and stop recording.